Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. In the throes of a brutal war against a common enemy, can an unexpected act of compassion between a human and alien shift the tides of conflict? Let's get into the story. The stench of cauterized flesh and stale blood was a constant companion in the field hospital, a relentless miasma that seeped into my bones. Exhaustion clawed at my sanity as I staggered through the endless cycle of mutilated bodies, a battle-worn medic in an even more brutal war. We were losing, not only territory, but the very essence of what I believed it meant to be human. Every day, more of my idealism chipped away, and I was starting to fear that the hollowness left in its place would eventually consume me whole. The shriek of incoming drop pods tore my attention away from the wounded soldier I was treating. It was them again, the Thoraxians. Insectoid, chitin-armored, and ruthlessly efficient in spreading their empire. Each encounter sent fresh waves of mangled soldiers to my makeshift operating table. In the chaos, amidst the screams and shouted orders, a figure stumbled into the tent. I assumed it was another casualty, but something was off. The figure collapsed in a heap, its segmented exoskeleton shimmering in almost iridescent blue rather than the usual dull olive. One of them. My first instinct was a surge of anger, a primal desire for retribution. My hands, however, had a mind of their own. Years of training, the ingrained oath to preserve life overrode the burning hatred. Before my conscious mind could catch up, I found myself kneeling beside the creature, assessing its wounds. It thrashed weakly, segmented mandibles clacking on what I could only assume was fear and pain. A thin trail of luminescent blood leaked from beneath its armored plating. There was no weapon, no sign of aggression, just an injured being as lost in the tides of war as I was. Voices barked questions at my back, the air crackled with tension far more dangerous than any outside threat. To treat an enemy, one of the faceless monsters responsible for countless human deaths, was not merely unconventional, it was treason in the eyes of my battle-hardened comrades. I ignored them. A choice had to be made, swift and resolute. The ingrained oaths of a medic warred with the fear and anger stoked by years of relentless conflict. It felt like a betrayal. Yet the creature lying before me was no longer a faceless enemy. It had become an individual, wounded and alone, mirroring the desperation I saw in the eyes of my own kind every day. Hold him down, I barked at my assistants, my voice laced with a grim determination that brooked no argument. They obeyed, their own eyes a mix of confusion and disgust. The creature hissed, its segmented limbs flailing in an attempt to escape, but strength seeped away from the strange glowing blood, weakening its struggles. I injected a powerful sedative, the standard one used on humans. It might kill the alien, but not as surely as the hands of my own people would if I didn't act fast. The chitinous armor offered a challenge, but my hands, guided by the muscle memory of a hundred surgeries, found the weak points. Beneath the hard shell, the flesh was an unsettling mottled purple crisscrossed with pulsing veins carrying that eerie luminescent blood. I located the source of the bleeding, a long gash, jagged and deep. The language barrier rose like an insurmountable wall between us. There was no way to explain, to reassure the creature that my intentions were not to further harm him. This act of mercy was the most difficult of my life, a silent promise that I may or may not be able to honor. The surgery was gruesome, the field hospital ill-equipped for alien anatomy. But fueled by adrenaline and the stubborn defiance of the hopeless, I pushed through. Sweat mingled with the alien blood on my brow as I sutured the wound's clothes, as best I was able. Every moment I expected shouts, restraints, or perhaps the cold muzzle of a gun against my temple. Yet none came. When I finally slumped back, trembling with exhaustion, the alien warrior, for warrior it undeniably was, lay still on the makeshift table. Whether alive or dead, I couldn't be sure. Wordlessly, I signaled for my assistants to help me move the creature to a corner, concealed beneath a pile of discarded bloody bandages. The world seemed to tilt on its axis, every certainty I'd clung to now lying in tatters at my feet. Sleep was a luxury I couldn't afford, but the adrenaline that had kept me going finally deserted me. My vision blurred as exhaustion wrapped its insidious tendrils around me. Just a few minutes of rest, I promised myself. Just a few. A rough shake jolted me awake. Sergeant Miller, his face as hard as granite, glared down at me. There's a commotion outside. Get your ass out there, medic. My heart hammered a panicked rhythm. 
Had they discovered my secret? It looked like I would face a tribunal sooner than expected. I stumbled out of the tent, blinking in the harsh sunlight, to witness a scene both strange and terrifying. A group of Thoraxians, tall and imposing in their battle armor, stood in a tight formation around something carefully shielded from view. Their presence in the heart of the human camp was unprecedented and alarming. My fellow soldiers were on high alert, weapons trained, fingers hovering over triggers. What's the meaning of this? Commander Harris's voice boomed across the tent's clearing. The lead Thoraxian stepped forward, mandibles working soundlessly. But within the circle, another alien emerged, smaller, iridescent blue, unmistakably the one I had treated. It held up an appendage in a gesture that could have been supplication or a challenge. Somehow, it had called its own kind here. A translator bot was hastily retrieved, its monotone voice echoing the alien's words across the camp. We seek the return of our comrade, offer of truce in exchange. The words hung heavy with disbelief. I was exposed, my actions laid bare before my entire unit. But the greater shock was the Thoraxian's very presence, a crack in the wall of us versus them that had defined this bloody war. Commander Harris hesitated, a flicker of indecision momentarily replacing his usual stern facade. He glanced at me, saw the confirmation plain on my face. To deny it now would mean the immediate death of the wounded Thoraxian, and quite possibly my own. The medic treated one of yours. He finally growled, eyes narrowing. Against orders, but it is alive. I watched, heart pounding as the translator bot relayed his words. The effect was like a tremor shaking the foundations of the Thoraxian formation. A ripple of what can only be shot pulsed through the hardened warriors, so closely mirroring the reactions of my own kind. A tense silence stretched, thin and brittle as ice about to crack. The Thoraxians conferred amongst themselves, the buzzing clicks of their mandibles a dissonant hum in the human encampment. They looked at their wounded comrade, then back at us, a profound shift in the balance of power hanging heavy in the air. Finally, the lead Thoraxian addressed the translator once more. Acknowledgement, unexpected, gratitude, not anticipated. The words were halting, the syntax awkward, but the meaning pierced through the language barrier with shocking clarity. We offer a temporary cessation of hostilities, a window to discuss possibilities. The translator suggested with the last word as if the very concept was alien to its programming. I held my breath. Possibilities? What, what possibilities could exist between warring species? Commander Harris, a veteran of a long and brutal campaign, mirrored that skepticism. His hand clenched into a fist, then slowly relaxed. One hour, he conceded. Then you leave. No negotiation. No tricks. His tone broke no dissent. The Thoraxians retreated in a disciplined unison, carrying their wounded with a care that seemed strangely at odds with their fearsome reputation. My fellow soldiers shifted uncertainly, a disorienting mix of anger, confusion, and begrudging respect swirling around me. I was herded back into my tent, a prisoner in all but name. As the canvas walls closed in, I couldn't help but wonder if my decision to save a life had ignited a spark of hope or merely fan the flames of war about to become even more brutal. The hours crawled by with agonizing slowness. The weight of my actions pressed down, threatening to crush me. Had I inadvertently betrayed humankind out of a misguided sense of duty? Or planted a seed, however fragile, for a future where enemies might find common ground? As the stipulated time drew near, Commander Harris entered my makeshift prison. His expression was unreadable a mask molded by years of conflict. You sure got a pair on you, medic. His voice was surprisingly without malice. The Raxian High Command wants to talk to you, specifically. The absurdity of the situation threatened to overwhelm me. Just hours ago, I was a traitor on the verge of execution. Now, I, I was somehow the linchpin of a possible truce, a fragile bridge between two species locked in a bloody stalemate. Harris escorted me out of the camp, a grim-faced shadow mirroring my every step. I stumbled more than once, exhaustion and the relentless pounding of my heart taking their toll. A Thoraxian encampment, a chaotic sprawl of organic-looking structures, lay a short distance away, an alien mirror image of our own base. We were met halfway by a single Thoraxian, 
its iridescent armor gleaming in the unforgiving glare of the sun. It was the one I had treated, moving stiffly but unmistakably alive. It inclined its head in an unnerving gesture, mandibles clicking softly. Inside the largest of the alien structures, a circular chamber pulsed with a dim luminescence. A long, segmented table dominated the space, around which stood several imposing Thoraxian figures. I recognized their leader, the one who had initially offered the truce. What I didn't expect was the alien standing opposite the leader, the being I'd saved from bleeding out on the floor of my field hospital. The translator bot hovered between us, its voice buzzing in the tense silence. The one you call medic, requested by name, it stated flatly. The late Thoraxian's gaze held mine with a chilling intensity. It bears our mark. Its voice rasped, words heavily accented but undeniably inhuman English. My eyes darted to the alien beside him. There, on its shoulder, was a crude symbol etched in what was probably my blood. A simple circle, the universal sign of the medical profession. Mark of the healer. The Thoraxian leader elaborated, a strange note of respect in its voice. It saved the life of a key commander. We hold such marks in high esteem. A wave of shock washed over me. Commander, that, that explained the Thoraxian presence at the heart of our camp in the unprecedented request. My active, impulsive compassion had rippled further than I could have imagined. Now, the fate of the ceasefire and perhaps even the course of the war itself hung on my words. I swallowed hard, the sudden dryness in my throat making it difficult to speak. I am a medic. I managed my voice raspy. It is my duty to treat the injured. Regardless, I hesitated, then forced the words out. Regardless of side. Yet, this is war. The lead Thoraxian rasp, its multiple eyes fixed on me with unsettling scrutiny. You would save your enemy, risking all for what? For the chance that maybe, just maybe, we don't have to be enemies. The words burst out, fueled by a desperation and a sliver of hope I'd buried deep within. They echoed in the chamber, a stark challenge to the very concept of this brutal conflict. The translator seemed to malfunction for a moment, the gears in its metallic shell grinding against the outlandish concept. Finally, it spit out a rough approximation in the clicking Thoraxian tongue. An uneasy silence descended. The Thoraxian leadership exchanged glances laden with a heavy meaning, a silent communication I could not comprehend. The alien I had treated, the key commander, stepped forward. Its movements were still stiff, but... Its eyes, strange, multifaceted orbs, burned with intensity. The healer risked much. We acknowledge this. It dipped its head towards me. This action was unexpected. Unexpected. The leader echoed, its mandibles working thoughtfully. Perhaps there is merit in the unexpected. It turned to me, fixing me with its unnerving stare. Your actions have disrupted the known. Intriguing. A negotiation began, halting and awkward, strained through the imperfect filter of the translator. Yet beneath the jarring syntax and fumbling attempts at understanding, a fragile thread of possibility emerged. The Thoraxians spoke of their dwindling resources, of the stalemate in which neither side truly gained. The words echoed my own despair, the disillusionment that had driven my act of defiance. As the talks wore on, I learned a shocking truth. The Thoraxians were fighting this same enemy that had driven humanity from countless star systems across the galaxy, the Zentor. These monstrous beings cared little for territory or ideology. Their purpose was destruction, total and merciless. A cold horror settled within me. Had my single decision born out of a simple desire to heal, unwittingly given us the key to survival? Commander Harris stood off to the side, observing the proceedings with the guarded wariness of a seasoned soldier. I met his eyes, and surprisingly, what I saw wasn't hostility. There was a calculation in his gaze, 
a grudging acceptance that the rules had fundamentally shifted. We may have more in common than we believed. The Thoraxian leader rasped. Its voice was laced with weariness that transcended all boundaries of species. The Centaur, they are a common enemy. One that threatens all. The air crackled with tension as the audacity of the suggestion sank in. For the first time in years, we saw a crack in the wall. A glimpse of a world where them and us might merge, however tentatively, against a greater foe. A combined force, Commander Harris muttered under his breath, more to himself than anyone else. The prospect held both a terrifying allure and a desperate hope. The negotiations stretched into the night, fueled by bitter stimulant rations and even more bitter shared history of struggle against the Zentor. I became both translator and the reluctant diplomat, my voice hoarse as I relayed the Thoraxian stories of loss, their accounts of entire planets consumed by the merciless enemy. As the details coalesced, a horrifying picture emerged. The Zentor weren't simply mindless destroyers. There was a frightening intelligence to their brutality. Their tactics evolved with terrifying speed, overcoming every line of defense humanity or the Thoraxians had erected. It became chillingly clear that if we didn't forge an alliance, even one born out of necessity, extinction would be our ultimate shared fate. Hesitantly, we started formulating a plan. Combining our knowledge and resources could give us the edge we so desperately needed. The Thoraxians, with their natural resilience and adaptive tactics, and humanity with our unmatched tenacity and raw ingenuity, presented a formidable threat to even a foe like the Zentor. This was no longer just a truce. This was the genesis of a desperate, improbable alliance forged in the fires of a brutal war. The risks were immeasurable, but compared to the certainty of annihilation, this was a risk worth taking. News of the unprecedented alliance spread with unsettling speed. My name, the name of the medic who had broken ranks to save an enemy, was whispered through the camps, with scorn by some, but with a dawning flicker of hope by many others. The transition wasn't smooth. Mistrust lingered like a toxic fog that would take generations to fully dissipate. Humans and Thoraxians worked side by side, training together and sharing tactical information. But the ingrained aversion took time to erode. I became a bridge between the two, my medical expertise earning me a grudging respect on both sides. Yet there were moments, flashes of pure understanding that transcended the barriers of prejudice. I witnessed a Thoraxian warrior gently cradling a wounded human soldier, administering the crude equivalent of a painkiller I had taught them how to synthesize. I watched a human engineer and a Thoraxian technician argue passionately about the intricacies of a prototype shield generator. Their shared language, not one of words, but of schematics and mathematics. The wounded Thoraxian commander, the one whose life I had saved, became an unlikely ally. Initially, it was simply a matter of ensuring I was not punished too harshly for my defiance. But as she healed, and we worked together to treat the inevitable casualties of our joint operations, something more tentative began to form. Respect, born from shared experiences and the understanding that survival sometimes demanded unexpected choices. Her name, I learned eventually, was Kara, and she possessed a fierce intellect and tactical prowess. My rudimentary grasp of her language, coupled with her limited human vocabulary, led to halting conversations filled with misunderstandings and bursts of unexpected laughter. Kara witnessed firsthand the toll this seemingly endless war took on humanity. She saw the haunted eyes of our soldiers, the exhaustion etched on the faces far too young for the horrors they endured. It stirred within her a sense of, not empathy, but a pragmatic acknowledgement of the cost of relentless conflict. One day, as we tended to a fallen comrade, a shadow fell over me. Kara stood at my shoulder, her voice surprisingly gentle for one of her kind. You were right, human medic. This ceaseless fighting, it is a path neither of our people can survive. The first true victory came swiftly born of shared intelligence and combined strategy. 
With the focus temporarily off ourselves, we were able to strike hard at a Zentor outpost, disrupting their supply chain and sending ripples of disarray through their ranks. The taste of victory, however bitter and blood-tainted it was, proved intoxicating. It fueled a determination that had grown dim, a belief that we weren't merely pawns in a cosmic game of annihilation. We had the power to change the narrative, to fight back and win. With each strategic move, the Alliance solidified, the bond between our two desperate species growing stronger. It wasn't built on friendship or idealism, but on a brutal pragmatism, the shared determination to survive against all odds. Of course, there were setbacks. The Zentor adapted with terrifying speed, retaliating in ways that pushed our combined forces to the brink. There were sacrifices, losses so profound that they threatened to tear apart the fragile fabric of the Alliance. But in those moments of stark terror, those times when despair clawed at our throats, that the true potential of this unexpected partnership was laid bare, that the Raxian's natural resilience bolstered faltering human spirits while humanity's unyielding grit inspired the Thoraxians to fight on when all logic dictated surrender. The conflict evolved. We were no longer simply trying to survive. We were actively pushing the Zintor back, reclaiming territory and disrupting their previously unchallenged dominance. Rumors spread through the ranks of disunity amongst the Zintor forces, of factions splintering off as the tide of war turned against them. I was no longer just Alex the Medic. I became a symbol, a flawed representation of the possibility this alliance embodied. I found myself giving speeches, my words clumsy and unpolished, but resonating with battle-scarred soldiers of both races. I was not a leader in the traditional sense, yet they looked at me, drew strength from my story, and dared to embrace a future built on cooperation against a terrifyingly powerful enemy. The day finally came when we pushed the Zentor beyond the rim of claimed space driving them back into the uncharted depths. It wasn't a clean victory, nor was it an end. Yet, it was the first breath of true hope in our long and bloody history.